hello youtube viewers welcome to my channel science to technology in today's show future friday we're going to talk about flywheel energy storage system so let's dive right into it well first we have to talk about what we are actually talking about here it's mechanical battery now if you type mechanical battery this probably would be the first search result that you come up with now this puppy takes electrical energy and converts into mechanical energy and then uh, to make this into a like quote unquote battery you need motor generator unit preferably you can have like you know one side is a generator one side is a motor you can have that but generally it's preferred to have one connection point and that connection point has to be combo unit basically it can act as a generator and uh, basically motor at the same time then it has been used for centuries this is a common uh, technology we have figured it out and because of the development of combined unit of motor and generator unit uh, this technology is becoming a more viable as an energy storage system for electrical needs now what is the science behind it now this is a fundamental aspect that you have to understand energy cannot be created nor destroyed so you, all you are doing is converting its format so electricity is going into motion so what does charging looks like basically you're taking a mass and it will you will start to spin up basically it will go from 0 rpm to 1 rpm to 100 rpm to 1000 rpm to 10000 rpm so that's charging up discharging will look exactly the opposite the spin down phase it will be go from 10000 rpm to 9000 to 8000 to uh, you know 7000 like that so that's all you are having that's the charging and discharging now how much energy, how much oomph this puppy can carry, how much kilowatt hour it can carry, that directly depends on two core fundamentals. The fundamentals one is RPM, basically how fast you are spinning this puppy, and then mass. Now be mindful for certain scenarios, you may have ludicrously high RPM, but ludicrously low mass. For example, NASA's uh, system, uh, because they were designing this puppy to be on a satellite, it, they had to be make it uh, sure that it's very light, as light as possible. So they were spinning this puppy up as bonkers high as like a 60,000 RPM. But uh, when you're talking about a grid scale energy storage uh, the rpm if you want to do that with light mass will go ludicrously high so generally there is two categories of flywheel storage one is below 10000 one is below 100000 so this puppy is generally running at uh, 10,000 RPM. So this is enough. Like uh, you don't need 60,000 RPM if you have big enough mass. So these two core factors define how many kilowatt hour or how many megawatt hour of energy storage you have. That's the whole point. And how does it work? It's rather simple. You have an energy in input link and then it goes to the um, basically con bi-directional converter that you have to motor generator unit. At the charging stage, motor is acting as the primary equipment. It's going to spin the system up. Now, one thing you have to understand because RPM is such an annoying thing, it degrades by uh, basically bearings you do not want bearings so we utilize magnetic bearings now at very low rpm you can try to utilize the basically normal ball bearings or cylindrical bearings but problem with those is like they will leach up a lot of energy so fundamentally uh, unless you have magnetic bearing don't even think about it otherwise you have to make it like you know 10,000 ton and then rotate it at 100 rpm even then bearings will end up losing like around three to five percent of total energy capacity so magnetic bearings are used and that is the another reason that's why you only wanted one point where you are having uh, basically stuff packed into this it also makes it compact and then you encase this puppy into a vacuum chamber or a helium or hydrogen field chamber uh, you will generally use that helium or hydrogen field chamber if you have something that needs thermal conduction basically that will allow the heat to be distributed evenly and cool off the equipment now if you do not do that you still have to have cooling equipment to that the, that depending you could have liquid cooling or you could have heat pipes that are connecting basically the hot components to the chamber wall that way it can dump the heat out because if you do not plan for that you may end up cooking the equipment so that's one thing you have to think about and that's all, all there is to it it's like just a chassis that will allow for partial vacuum or pure vacuum or hydrogen or helium field then you have a mass mass will define how powerful this puppy is it is it one kilowatt hour unit or is it like you know five megawatt hour unit that's defined by mass and motor generator unit will control other factors like how much oomph you can dump in or dump out that is directly controlled by motor generator unit there is no inherent limitation to this technology so you can design something that is like you know hey i can i want to charge this puppy in five seconds it can be done as long as your motor unit is powerful enough you will be like hey i want to discharge it in like you know few seconds like how it's used in uh, plasma uh, reactor technologies basically fusion reactors they need hundreds of megawatt of power very short duration of time generally a fly will be charged up slowly 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 and during the when they have like plasma on state where they have to power the electromagnet they're like okay drain the energy from the uh, basically flywheel and fly will slowly provide that power now slowly for five wheel is like five minutes and if that uh, helps uh, the power company to not have like you know giant uh, megawatt size uh, power plant on standby so that's the science behind it. it's a rather simple system and what are the benefits of this one 
crucial aspect of it is once you, uh, once you have done the investment there is no aging or power degradation think of it this way let's say you bought this battery bank unit and it's like 10 megawatt hour you're awesome you're making profit you're going yolo on it and what happens after 10 uh, years you still have 10 megawatt hour what happens after 70 years you still have 10 megawatt hour. again you would have some uh, maintenance some motors would have burnt out like again you will have some maintenance but uh, inherently there will not be any degradation or aging so that is very critical after it's like buy it and forget it as long as you, it's like a car basically if you maintain it properly it will keep going on forever and forever forever and then it also does not require any rare earth element so you do not have to worry about how the heck you're going to mine the basically lithium and the cobalt and other things that go into that you don't have to worry about that it's fundamentally easier it can be just made out of steel normal basic steel and then it can achieve very high power density depending on your motor configuration motor and generator configuration you can achieve a system which does not have too much uh, capacity but has enough uh, density enough peak power where it can like hey i'm only capable of storing let's say 20 kilowatt hour but i can give you two megawatt hour spike if the generator unit is designed that strong you can have that so in some scenarios where like dude i don't uh, i need to charge it very slowly so the motor unit would be like ah, dude, power electronics that is driving the motor side would be very basic but the unit that is running it in a generator mode it would be very beefed up so it can handle hundreds of ampere so very high energy density can be achieved another aspect is inherently there is nothing complicated it's a simple technology and it's safe so it will not swell up and it will like you know catch on fire uh, it's inherently safe yes if there is a risk of like it's me it's a mechanical thing it could break now the casing every flywheel energy technology requires a casing and casing has to be strong enough so if the internals go boom it should not come out of the casing that's the primary requirement again it will damage the casing it will be destroyed but it will not cause harm to other things and that's a primary requirement of an energy storage system like you're gonna stack multiple cells so you want to make sure that if damage happens it was always limited to that one unit it's not like it goes boom and it destroys 15 16 things you want to make sure of that and that has been taken care of and charge and discharge rate is also very amazing with this it's up to you it's like you can have a scenario it's like hey i'm gonna charge it with a lightning you can do that if you have the system for it and you want to discharge it very slowly you can do that you can do opposite also like uh you know charge up slowly and then the, the moment you power up your main reaction is like it discharges very quickly so that's up to you there is a lot of flexibility no magical hoo-ha required and uh, there is no aging effect of it it's like as long as you're maintaining it and given the fact that most moving parts are inside vacuum and non-touching it's like uh, it can keep working for very 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 long duration so if those are the pros uh, pros of it why don't we use it every place of uh, you know uh, every place everywhere every time the reality is very simple it does not have any discharge curve what does that mean that simply means it has the same issue as supercapacitor basically if you look at supercapacitor you will have like 100 percent capacity at uh, whatever the voltage let's just call 100 volt and zero uh, percent capacity at zero volt now that's not uh same with volt uh basically every battery technology there is for example you can look at a double a battery that you have in your wall clocks or things of that nature they will start at 1.5 volt they can dump almost all of their energy basically upwards of 80 percent of their energy or even 90 percent in cell uh, while they are around one volt so basically you will go from 1.5 volt to one volt and you would have dumped around 80 to 90 percent of your total capacity and you want that why think of this way every transformer requires to work on a constant voltage for example your lead acid battery it's a 12 volt system so transformer is designed to work on 12 volt now think of it this way your battery is like i'm gonna dump one uh, percent of my power in 12 volt uh, then uh, less power in lower voltage less power in lower voltage like i will keep going down you cannot design a transformer that can work on this it, it really like designing a transformer that can pump up like uh, the ampere rating will keep going high, high up so that is why uh, ultra capacitors are not very useful for many things and uh, same will happens with flywheel also so you have to design something let's say for your when you're talking about high rpm system so 10,000 rpm will mean 100 percent charge okay uh, zero rpm means zero that means your mo like your generator has to work at a very large rpm which is very very difficult to do like most generators are designed to work on a constant rpm for example 1500 rpm to 1600 that's this design range you could have double that triple that or whatever have you but it's never designed to like hey keep working from like zero rpm to like or at least 10 rpm to this that's not feasible so to say so there is always a lower unit where it's like it's gonna cut off so you could have a scenario where your uh, flywheel energy storage the lower 30 percent you cannot even touch it like deep discharging you cannot do that because again generator cannot extract enough energy out of it so that's a serious limitation so serious amount of energy capacity you simply cannot use and then another aspect the sole reason why nobody even uses it is like it's very 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 high capital capital cost so yes it can keep running on forever but the capital cost is so high you will be like dude i can buy 10 other things for 10 other times and i'll still have money left the capital cost is ludicrously high 
like don't even think about it. it's that kind of fight the primary reason for that is high rpm so think of it this way for f1 industry they started to use kinetic energy recovery system which they are no longer following or following like it's very confusing the rules because the modern ones have batteries so what they are using is in this system is that flywheel had to rotate very uh, fast simply because they wanted to keep the mass as light as possible so problem was they started with steel and start steel literally broke apart then they started with titanium that also started to deform too much so then they are like okay we're gonna use steel and then we're gonna wrap that puppy up with carbon uh, fiber system and then only then it was had enough structural integrity to not fall apart under centrifugal force so that's the very serious problem and when you were talking about like 100 kilogram or 5 ton uh, this sort of rotor that is rotating at 10,000 rpm yeah forget steel like you have to utilize carbon fiber or heck even magical material that has that kind of oomph retention capacity so fundamentally speaking uh, this makes the material cost like uh, material cost very high then we come to the other another aspect of the mass now you may be like okay let's not go high up in the rpm department let's go high in the mass department mass is easy right like even if you're let's say steel can only work at like 2000 rpm you're like what if i put 100 tons of it then comes the another problem the magnetic bearings are idiotically, ludicrously expensive. And the moment you're gonna talk to someone, it's like, hey, give me a magnetic bearing that is designed to, or you know, have torque rating of like, you know, 100 tons or 500 tons. Yeah, like, yeah, there are those. And those are used in like hydropower plants because those uh, dams have this giant rotating mass. And because from rotating mass point of view, earth is rotating. Like it will literally look like this and ground has fallen. So it starts to bang around. So those magnetic uh, system has a compensation mechanism where it's like, no, 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 no. And you have to do that in gyroscope also. And uh, that's also that makes the bearing department much, much more expensive. And that's the whole thing. Like either you make your material expensive or you make your bearing expensive or you practically speaking, both will be expensive. And vacuum chambers are not something that are super easy to do. So that is the actual con of it. That's the primary reason why this is so expensive. You'll be like, yeah, no, thanks. Like the, uh, if I want, like my house have a uh, multiple inverters. It's like, what if I can replace it with one giant uh, system? Will it work? Absolutely. Will it work for like, you know, generations to come? Absolutely. It's just that it will cost so much. It will be cheaper for me to have a solar farm put into my place, buy another land, put another solar farm and then keep enjoying the profit. That kind of capital cost disparity is here. And because of that uh, curve that there is no charge curve, it's like it has the issue of like how the heck you're going to extract the energy. So what we can expect in the future? Well, one thing you have to understand, this is one thing that we have to learn the hard way is like right tool for the right job is the primary solution. Yes, it is true that solar is finally taking over and it's in a position where it's like, it's financially uh, viable to do solar. Like for example, in Indian metropolitan cities, people are like just, dude, I can't afford electricity if you want to use air conditioner. And given the fact that India goes as hot as like 55 degrees Celsius, uh, we have to be like, you know, we have to use air conditioner. It's no longer just like optional. We have to have that. But again, the electricity cost is so high that is like it's cheaper it's like almost cost is like a mini car we buy equivalent of a mini car and the return on investment is like three to four years it's like right tool for the right job but does that mean solar is like the king for everything no you need wind because wind has at least probability of working 24 into 7 if done in the right place then you have a tidal again okay, same thing so right tool for the right job is primary reason so are there any unique selling point of this puppy which makes it viable for one thing it's like no this is my job this is i can do better than anything else that is frequency regular because it's a rotating mass and the more we are removing what we call spinning mass from uh, basically we are no longer using turbines and uh, we are replacing turbines with inverters inverters while they are good they inherently do not have anything that is locking their frequency so their frequency can drift wildly and that could put unnecessary strain on the grid system so you want something that is externally regulating frequency there is nothing better than spinning mass like flywheel energy storage system and that has been used like that's a, like a, i think at this point in time 10 year old power plant uh, power plant is a, like power factor correction system where they are fine-tuning all these things so uh, there is a very serious uh, requirement for power management where you have power conditioning voltage fluctuation management and like you know short duration backup systems this system is perfectly built for that because the system while it would be small physically small the area consumption would be small it can dump megawatts of power it's like bro i got this now if you try to do that megawatts of power of spike uh, on a conventional battery system it can do that but it would be ludicrously huge huge so there is a lot of potential there but only for that the moment you talk about like actual storage yeah no 
flat out no it does not even have any cost advantage that even allows it to come close to this and that's why you can easily notice in like if uh, in 2010 to 2015 there was so much talk about it like every youtube video was about this but now most of them have faded away and only few plants are actually uh, you know in use only few upss that utilize uh, this system is in use simply because this has finally caught up and like again in, even it does have a lot of flaws but because it's so cheap that you're like dude i can buy five six of it and if i'm making profit to today i can uh, devote a small amount of income to it it's like um, that's uh, kept for replacing the technology we have been making systems working with lead acid battery lithium ion is more than good enough so this has to have a niche use case scenario which we have because we are removing spinning mass from our system we can add spinning mass to our grid to stabilize the frequency response so there is a use to this but not as a power storage so this was my presentation on flywheel energy storage system i hope I, uh, you guys have liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friend that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me extra disappointment please leave a comment because i try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching